He's, he's been uh, kicking it on the stages a lot lately. I've seen him almost everywhere I go. Frankly, I'm tired of seeing him. But we're going to see him tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Mr. Rudy Ruiz. I'm excited to be up here. I've been coming to this club for about four or five months now, and as a spectator, now I get to be on stage, now I get to see this view, and this is awesome. I wish you guys could see it from up here. This is actually kind of cool. But uh, my name is Rudy. I recently divorced. It got finalized back in January. Um, actually, January, it was a Friday the 28th at 1.57 p.m. at the Kendall County Courthouse in Yorkville, Illinois. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I have that memory in my mental Rolodex. Anybody that's ever been through a divorce, do you remember that? Uh, you know, the thing about divorce, anybody that's been through divorce, or you're thinking about divorcing the person you're sitting next to, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> it, uh, it's a very, a, a very emotional roller coaster. I mean, it just wreaks havoc on your emotions, it clouds your judgment, your thought process, everything. You know, and it, it wreaks havoc on the kids. The kids get it the worst. You know, they get shoved into a lifestyle that they didn't ask for, much less, you know, they get an option on it. They didn't sit at the table and say, okay, kids, look, um, mommy's been sleeping with another guy behind daddy's back, so um, I'm thinking about leaving him and divorcing him, so those in favor say I, those opposed say nay. Of course, the little one doesn't understand, nay like, like a horse? Like nay? No, honey, nay like your mom's a jackass. Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, like I said, with the kids, they, they have a really hard time adjusting to it. My little four-year-old, she's my little shadow. Actually, Amelia's uh, met her once and uh, she spent the night a couple months ago and uh, when she spent the night we had to wake up it was like a sun it was actually a Sunday night Monday morning I go to work at six well if you ever have to wake up a four-year-old at five o'clock in the morning you understand that is a very daunting task it's like waking up a little Sasquatch out of a slumber it's like honey it's time to wake up I'm sorry damn you wake up when you want shit but uh, on the way to the car, you know, she was moody, you know, pouty. She's stomping her feet and everything. She doesn't want to go to school. I don't want to go to work. And she says, Daddy, you know, why do I have to go to school? Why do you have to go to work? Why can't you just move in and we can be a family again? You know, I'm sure Mommy can love you. Oh, yeah, that got me right here. So, yeah, I know, damn, that's what I'm saying. So, you know, I'm sitting here. I'm like, honey, I'm sorry. Things have changed. You know, uh, it doesn't mean I love you any less. You know, in fact, I love you even more. But, you know, we gotta get going, you know, we gotta hurry up. Like, let's go. Well, she got pissed. So she's getting into the car, and this is what she says under her breath. This is goddamn ridiculous. <laughs> I said, oh, hell no! This is my little girl! So I stopped, I go, no, no, hold, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Where did you hear this word? Mommy. Mommy. Figures. Okay, honey, look, we don't, we don't say words like that. Um, you know, you can't say, why not? Well, because people judge you on the way you talk and you really shouldn't say things like that. Okay. And just for future reference, it's pronounced ridiculous. And you're absolutely right. This is goddamn ridiculous. Now let's go before we're late. Uh, yeah, I'll tell you, like, emotions. Like I said, I talked about the emotions. It clouds your judgment. It clouds everything that goes on. And you find yourself in awkward situations. Situations where you make fun of people because they're punk ass in that situation years ago and you're making fun of them, now you're that person years later after going through the divorce. You know, you find yourself in these odd, very, very, very awkward situations. There's one lady I read about um, on the internet uh, a few weeks back. Her job was, uh, she worked at a morgue, and her job was to wash the corpses uh, prior to, the, before they get embalmed and everything. Um, so I don't know how she got stuck with that shitty job, but uh, you know, ain't nothing going on but the rent. <laughs> <laughs> Those of wiser generation remember that song, Ain't Nothing Going On But The Rank. So, that's what was going on, so she needed the job. But uh, anyway, she's, she's watching the corpse and everything. Those of you, I don't know if you knew this, but male corpses can actually achieve post-mortem erections. And uh, so, that being said, yeah, we know where this is going. With that being said, she's sitting there watching the corpse, you know, listening to her iPod and everything. And as she's, you know, getting down south, she starts to, you know, hmm, hmm. Oh my God. Is that a... Oh, it's a 
Well, she did what any woman that was recently divorced and sexually deprived did. She mounted the corpse. No. She did. She mounted the corpse. No, you got she got attacked and she worked it, girl. Giddy up, giddy up. She was working it, boy. Got done, washed him up, washed herself up. Um, you know, they did whatever they had to do with the body. Well, a couple weeks <laughs> later, she starts to get sick. And preferably in the morning time. So she goes to the physician and tells the physician what's going on and everything. You got, uh, this is actually happening. She went to the physician, the physician looks at her and says, okay, well, you're pregnant. <laughs> what? Uh, yeah, you're, you're a couple weeks along. Um, you know, uh, I, I take it this wasn't a was planned pregnancy. Uh, yeah, no shit, this is really <laughs> Well, maybe, you know, if you can go talk to your partner, your, your boyfriend, your fiance, you know, there are options for you. Um, you know, we can certainly take care of this if you're not ready to have a, a baby. Yeah, that's going to be a problem. Um, so she tells the doctor what she did. Doctor freaks out and says, okay, let me get this straight. Um, you were screwing a dead guy? Uh, that's called necrophilia. That's illegal. You're not supposed to do that. Uh, okay, um, well, all right. Well, I don't know what happened to the legal aspect of that, but the kicker is that she is now going and suing the dead man's estate for child support. Oh. <laughs> Ain't that a bitch? Ain't that dead? People, he's dead. The game's over. You know, you're just going to screw him. He didn't have to be screwed. He's not going after his money. It ain't his fault. And it's going to take a long time after being wrapped up in all that, you know, legal aspect before she gets some money. But, I mean, pff, damn. That beat dad's. What are you going to do? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that's my time. You've been a great audience. Thank you very much.